Ableton Live is one of the most stable softwares that you can use on stage. That's why it's trusted by so many professional playback techs to run and control uh, music shows and concerts all over the world. But occasionally you run into those weird issues that uh, just doesn't make sense and, and something seems wrong. Maybe something like this. You open your live set, you press play, and this is what you hear. Now, while that may be a great glitch effect if you're trying to make some electronic music remix and you want your audio to glitch out, it's not a very good effect if you're trying to run tracks on stage and want things to sound great. So if you're having issues with your audio cracking and popping in Ableton Live, I think I have a pretty easy and simple fix that I want to share with you. So let's take a look, jump back into Ableton Live. Um, let's go into Ableton Live's audio preferences. Uh, we can get there by doing command comma. If we're on a PC, we can do control comma and we want to go to the audio tab and where I want us to hang out is this section right here. So under latency, we have buffer size. Now, the best way I can explain buffer size and latency is basically think of um, two simultaneous tasks that your computer is trying to prioritize for. One is trying to prioritize to reduce latency. So if you happen to have, uh, like in front of me here, I've got a MIDI keyboard set up. Now it's, uh, I'm not currently using it. I'm not currently playing keys, but if I'm using a MIDI keyboard with Ableton Live, then something that's super important for me to prioritize is reducing the latency. And if you're not familiar with latency, latency is the delay between when you hear to hit a key and you hear it, right? We want that to be as, as low as possible so that it really feels like we're playing a piano, a real life piano. But the other thing we've got to try to balance is, um, is putting enough CPU power, using enough of the computer's resources to allow us to use the sounds and the things that we've created in Ableton Live. So for instance, you could have a MIDI keyboard set up with Ableton Live, but we wanna make sure that we have enough power so that we can run uh, maybe a, a keys preset, maybe a piano preset uh, in Ableton Live. And so we're both managing low latency, but enough CPU power at the same time. And what you're essentially doing when you're doing buffer sizes, the lower your buffer size, the lower the latency, which is great, but the more um, it's, it's taking away this computer power that could be used for processing and it's putting that more towards, hey, let's make sure the latency is super low. Now, if this gets out of balance, kind of like what we see here, our latency is incredible, but our audio starts to crack, our audio starts to pop. And so what do we do to fix that? It's pretty simple. And there's a little bit of kind of a, a, a game of give and take we need to play. But the first thing I start doing is I start raising my buffer size and I just go in kind of small increments. Uh, and I basically just raise this up until my computer starts to respond like it should and the glitchiness starts to go away. So uh, initially I was at 32 samples. Now I'm at 128 samples. Um, let's press play and let's see if that fixes our issue. I think we have to go maybe a little bit further further okay so that's not Intro, bad two, three, four. but we're gonna hit a kind of high cpu part here in a second all right there we go all right so you can see our cpu is peaking up here the upper right hand corner so that means i need to take a little more away from latency and i need to put a little more towards my processing power so i'm going to go back into my preferences here we're at 128 Let's bump it up to 256. Let's try that. And this is this is basically the process I'm going to follow if I'm going to do this live. I'm going to start low, slowly raise this up, press play, see what gets better, and, and figure out when it gets better. So let's press play again. Okay, you can see our CPU. Two, CPU three, is still pretty four. high, but I did create an instrument that uh, is going to just destroy my CPU. All right, so there we go. There's our big high peak. Now, let's see if we can go one one more. To about 512. And if this doesn't work, then we're going to bring in the big, gun, big guns and go up to 2048 and see if this works. Okay, let's start over from the beginning now. Okay, Intro, so this section two, seems three, to be good four. again. This is where our problems start. Keep an eye on our CPU up here. Oh, okay, cracking and popping a little bit. It's better. Now, I'm going to just to try to avoid this, I'm going to go all the way to 2048 and let's see if this gets rid of that. Uh, crack and pop, particularly right here. And I should mention, Ableton is so efficient that I literally had to create, I'll show you what I did here. I created a instrument rack with uh, a whole bunch of instances of uh, this particular sound and just played random notes. 
And I had to go pretty far to get this to actually start to cause issues and wreak havoc. So that shows you how stable and efficient Ableton Live is. I'm running a, a M1 Mac Mini, but it took me a long time to get it to the place where it does this. But let's see if this, this fixes it. I think, at least I hope, at 2048 this fixes it. We'll actually talk about... If for some reason this doesn't fix it, we'll talk about what we have to do in in kind of response to that. But let's try this out. Intro two. Three, okay, let's watch our CPU. Four. So it should spike right around here. We hope this is enough. Okay, so you saw we didn't have that big peak of like 101 that we had before. Things did get a little weird there. Oh, they're starting to get a little weird here too. But you hear at least, let's compare what we had to where we are. And then I'll talk about our final kind of consideration. Let's go back to 32 and listen to what we had there. Okay, so just pure chaos and insanity, right? Which is pretty fun. I mean, that's a pretty cool sound. So just by raising this up, um, we actually didn't take it the time. Let's go there. Just by raising this up, you hear how much better things sound. Uh, our CPU is a lot more manageable, but it's still not perfect. And so at this point, by uh, raising my buffer size up, I'm saying it's more important for me to prioritize CPU and processing power than it is for me to, to prioritize low latency. Now, this is really a game, like I said, of give and take. If you're using your computer to process both keys and tracks, stop doing that. Number one, if you cannot find a, a kind of an equal medium to where you say, uh, my latency is low enough, but I have enough processing power, then you need to devote just a single computer to your key stuff. Because um, what you're essentially finding is you're finding the, the max that your computer can handle. Now, in my case, I've kind of found that um, all these different notes and 39 different instrument chains uh, all running the same sound is just too much for my computer on top of all my tracks and everything else I have. So once I've found that I've reached that limit, uh, I need to then go and say, okay, what can I pair back on? So one of the things you could do is you could freeze a track. Um, you could freeze and then consolidate and turn it into audio if you wanted so that you still have that track if you're doing MIDI, but it's not actually processing MIDI in real time. Uh, you could go through and consolidate you know, multiple stems together if, if that's uh, causing issues. Typically, what you're going to find that's going to really peak the CPU is your, uh, is your MIDI stuff. So converting MIDI to audio... Um, even if it's just temporarily by freezing it. If you're not familiar with freezing, I'm going to right click on this. This is probably going to take forever, so I, I might actually stop it. But I could click freeze track here. Yeah, it's going to take a while because there's so much info there. Um, but by doing that, it's going to freeze that uh, MIDI track basically record that mini track in place and turn it into audio. I could go back after the fact and unfreeze it and work with it. But by doing that, that'll solve a lot of those CPE issues because I'm, I'm making this something that my computer could manage. But if you run into those issues again, and you have uh, cracking and popping in your audio, the first thing you should do is go into preferences, go to your audio tab, check your buffer size and raise your buffer size to the point that your CPU, um, uh, your, your cracking and popping goes away. If that doesn't work, then you've got to go back to your computer and figure out what can I either freeze or flatten or what can I get rid of because I've reached the absolute limit of my computer. Um, you know, double check that Wi-Fi is off and all those other things, but it's probably going to be issues and things in Ableton Live that we're concerned with. We've got too many tracks going on. And if you get to a point where your buffer size is so high that your latency is, is, is um, unplayable and unusable, then you're going to have to move your keys content off of your tracks computer onto a separate computer so that you can devote all the resources of that computer to keys and to processing MIDI and leave your uh, computer with tracks just dedicated to running tracks. So um, that's a look at how to hopefully solve the cracking and popping that you may be experiencing in Ableton Live. Again, uh, computers are so fast that it, it normally takes me a while to get it pushed to that point, but it does happen. And this time it took me 40 instrument chains uh, and instrument racks to make that happen, but it can happen. Um, and in case it does, hopefully now you know how to fix it. Now, if you've got a question that you want to see answered in a future tutorial, future video, then send me an email to questions at from studio to stage.com questions at from studio to stage.com. And I'll be more than happy to help. Now, if it's something short enough and easy enough that I can answer, I'll do my best to reply or send you a tutorial that I've already done. But if it makes sense and we can include it in a future tutorial, 
tutorial, then I will record a tutorial tutorial specifically for that and make sure to give you a shout out. And the other thing additionally as well, if you want some extra one-on-one -on -one help, I do offer one-on-one -on -one training sessions. You can find more information in the description of this video, both a 15 minute um, call that's really quick, easy way to just answer uh, a simple question, as well as a more in-depth um, hour long one-on-one uh, -on -one over Zoom call where we can meet. I'll record this session, send you a link afterwards. I can even control your computer and walk you through kind of uh, face to face, even though it's over Zoom on how to set that up. And again, I've included links and more information on how to uh, contact me and set up that session in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will see you uh, next week at 10 a.m. Central. Take care. Bye.